Sure. So I'm Kira Davis. I was originally the Big Sky Watershed Corps member for the Montana Watershed Corps Nation Council. And um, I ended up moving back to Kentucky afterwards for my husband's job. And MWCC reached back out to me and was like, would you like to work remotely? And that was an absolute yes. So since then, I've worked on and off a little bit with MWCC, uh, took a small break when I had my first child, and now I'm back. And so it's been a wild ride, but I'm really excited to be here and share with you all what I've learned. Okay, take it away. Awesome. Let's see here. So now I've got to, I was trying to share with someone our meeting. Yeah, and I made you stop sharing before everybody jumped in, so. Well, MFCN was like, I couldn't find the link. So I was sharing that with them. Okay, so in case you weren't aware, we're here to talk about communications, tips and tricks when you don't have a whole lot of time to get what you need done. Uh, this is sponsored by Northwestern Energy, so we really appreciate them letting us share with you all. So today I'm going to give a little introduction about myself, just some general communications tips around, you know, social media. We really focus on Facebook and Instagram, so I'm going to highlight those two. And then websites and tools that I really recommend using. So I was raised in Kentucky. I got my bachelor's in wildlife management. And I did three terms of service with Montana Conservation Corps. And now I'm currently living in central Kentucky. And right now I'm the Outreach and Communications Coordinator for MWCC. So I do our social media newsletter and the website mostly. My experience, uh, it was mostly on the job learning. I do watch a lot of tutorials and I'll be honest, TikTok videos have taught me a lot. I did do a nonprofit association small shops training course a couple weeks ago. And when all else fails, I love Google. That's how I do a lot of figuring things out. So right from the start, you need to know who your audience is. We at MWCC have been doing a lot of this recently, figuring out who are you trying to reach because you really want to tailor all of your outreach to your specific audience. Otherwise it's just flying right past them. And then you need to know which platforms are your audience using. We found that a lot of people that follow us are not using Twitter. And that's been for a while. And so why would we put in our small amount of time that we have towards Twitter when it's not giving us the outcomes that we want? And then you can always send out, send out a survey to your audience, figure out what it is that they're looking for. And just in general, like be authentic. Organizations try sometimes to tailor too much. And so like this graph right here, we have the top platforms that consumers and brands are using. And this kind of goes back to what I said about Twitter. We found that most of our audience is not using Twitter. And I got this from Sprout Social. They do a lot of social outreach data. And then you need to figure out what metrics are important to your organization. So there's, you know, clicks and likes and shares and you know, conversions to your website, what is it exactly that you want to learn about your audience and that your audience wants to learn about you? So 
So starting with social media, you want to make sure that everything you have is up to date. When you, you know, you go to someone's Facebook page and the information's five years old, it doesn't reflect well on you and they don't want to continue to look at your stuff. And then you want to work the algorithm. So that's things like sending at the right time, having people like and comment, but also you liking and commenting on other people's posts. Ooh. And then don't reinvent the wheel. You can always reshare content that you've already created at a later date, six, six months down the road. Share other people's comments and content and put a new spin on it. And then some of the scheduling platforms that we recommend, um, Meta Business Suite, it's only for Facebook and Instagram, which works perfect for us because that's the only two platforms that we use. And it allows you to do um, Instagram stories and multi-photo posts. And then there's also the website Later. It allows you to put up to six different social media accounts on it, and you can do 10 posts a month. But if I believe I'm correct, you cannot do Instagram stories. You can't post multi-photo posts. And then other ones are Hootsuite. And then with, via websites that I use daily, for social media content. Canva is my number one. I actually created this on Canva and I'm presenting from Canva on here. Uh, SurveyMonkey is a great website that we recommend. We use Bitly all the time. Uh, in Instagram, you cannot have links except in your bio. And so I have created a, a Bitly page and anytime I want to post a link in a photo in Instagram, I will just put in the description, look at the link in bio, and it's always that bit.ly link, and they go to that, and I have all the links that I want people to be able to click on from there, and I can show that when I'm done with the presentation. We use Meta Business Suite a lot. We used to use Hootsuite quite a bit, I uh, was not a big fan and then MailChimp and that's what we use for our newsletter. And that's just the really quick basics that I have. I wanted to leave plenty of time for us to discuss and really get into what everyone wanted to discuss. And I actually, Kira, I have just a question right off the bat. I was wondering if you, you, you know, when you were talking about, um, you know, don't reinvent the wheel, add some of your, you know, thing, maybe a post you posted six months ago, you could post again. But what I actually thought of when you did that was how we tend to, or tr we try to link our watershed newsletter to our social media, to our website, like kind of reuse things in that way too. Like, oh, absolutely. Same content, but different place. Can you speak a little bit to that about how, how to effectively, you know, not have the exact same wording everywhere, but how to effectively like advertise things across your different platforms. Sure. So I try to like space it out a little bit because you don't want it to be, you don't want to like kind of drown people in it. It just wants, you want it to be kind of like show up in the back of the mind. Oh, I think I saw that you know, a couple days ago and piqued their interest. And so I feel like less is more in that sense and that you just want to put small tidbits in each little spot and just kind of leave like a little trail of breadcrumbs to where you want people to go. 
does I I guess I have a question for you all. Do people here use Canva at all? Would you be interested in learning more about Canva? I use Canva a lot and I think I would like to learn a little bit more about it. Yeah, I've used it pretty extensively. Um, not necessarily at ISAN just yet because I've not had much time here, but yeah, I, I love it. Love it. Also, Kira, were you going to show how nonprofits can get the pro version? That's what I was just getting uh, so to. Um, I don't know how that applies to you, Claude. Like, anyway, it's for nonprofits. That's what I was getting ready to ask, Claudia. Do you oh, know? Um, no, all conservation districts have the pro Canva account. Nice. Yeah, it's pretty nice. <laughs> I haven't I haven't used it, but I think we we use it, <laughs> but I haven't used it, so yeah. that would be cool. Let me get it pulled up, and I can go over it a little more. So I just found this at the last training that I went to that we get Canva for nonprofits for free. And it makes things so nice because it allows you, you'll have to excuse my internet. Um, it allows you to basically use that every, everything Canva has and you're not limited to only certain graphics or anything like that. My favorite part though is the brand hub. So I can go in here and I have already uploaded our logos that we use. I've created the color palette. So it's always consistently the same colors across everything. We have special fonts for each text that we want to use. I have not uploaded photos or graphics yet. Like I said, this is still fairly new within the last two months that I've started using this. But they have trainings on how to use it. And I believe this is where you can go to find it. I think we've used it, or I think that Whitefish Lake Institute has used it for like advertising for, for example, like their science puncher. Would that be a good application for something like that and then it would be how does that work does it get shared through that site or <laughs> i guess i don't understand your question uh i think i feel like we've used canva for advertising us or making uh maybe like flyers or advertising like our oh yeah we have like our science puncher so yeah. how um how, how does that is that is that how that works is that it would be um, uh, make so you, a flyer for that and then you'd be sharing it on that site or is it? Uh, I think, it, Dere, are you trying to get at like, can you share those graphics? Like aside from printing them in Canva itself, can you share them elsewhere? Like on your website or in a newsletter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, so, you know, as you can see here at the, oh, I'm not sharing my screen. Sorry. As you can see at the top of this page here, you can create documents, Facebook posts, Instagram posts. Personally, I usually create everything I'm going to share online, like Facebook and Instagram with an Instagram post square, because then I know it's always going to fit no matter where I put it. If you use some of these other ones, Instagram will cut it off. And I want everyone to be able to see what I am doing. So let's go to our Greater Helena Gifts graphic that I have created. Again, I apologize for my internet. So once you've created this, you go up here in the corner to share. 
you can give access to people. You can input like their email address. You can create a team. You can download it. You can share straight from Canva. I have not tried that function yet. I mean, there's so, you can do a view only link. There's so many things that you can do on Canva once you've created it. But like I said, I mean, there are so many templates that you can use. It's just makes things so much simpler to go in here, choose a template and just edit. I don't have to, again, reinvent the wheel. They've already created the wheel for me. I just have to fix it up, make it look nice. Uh, yeah, I've used it quite a bit um, and seems like since things are getting pushed more towards video, that's really what pushed me over the edge to get a pro account was mm. the video because you can do videos in Canva and otherwise I, you know, you can do Photoshop or something like that, but it's really easy to do quick videos in Canva and then you can use like, they have GIFs and they have, I mean, they just have tons of things that you can just pull you don't have to create all these things yourself and that's beautiful <laughs> um, and time saving so I really like the video part the only thing that I don't know I haven't looked into is I don't think that they host these things so you can't like embed things say into your website from my knowledge do you know or I don't know about that I've never embedded anything but I have you know downloaded it and then uploaded it onto our website. I do that all the time. Yeah. I will say I did an image the other day trying to promote our YouTube channel. And I was able to actually link our YouTube channel in the image. So when I shared it on Facebook, when people clicked on the image, it took them to our YouTube page. That's cool. Other other questions for, for Kira or the group or thoughts? Hi, Kira and everyone. This is Deborah Parker Foley with Montana Force Collaboration Network. I'm sorry I joined late. Um, I have a quick question and I feel kind of like an idiot asking this. We just started using Instagram for MFCN and I could not, when you said find the link in the bio on Instagram. Sure. Why did I have trouble finding the link in the bio? Can you show me where on Instagram? I mean, this is just a basic thing that you. It's okay. That's not a stupid question. What? What? <laughs> so when you go to your profile. Yeah. Uh, there is a small section that is considered your bio. And you will see right here, I have this Bitly link. And so with Bitly, I just, that link always stays the same. I never have to edit my bio. And it creates what's called like a link tree. I don't know if I can technically use that term or if that's like another organization's term but I have all of these links that I can change what I want people to see when they click on that original link okay and so that way you're not only just tied to one link and you're constantly have to changing it in your bio okay so you just go straight to bit.ly can you show me again I'm sorry I I guess go back can you please go back and show me where Montana educate to okay so, so the, like how did you get to that? how did you get to this page yeah, yeah. so yeah. when you go to Instagram you go to your profile yeah got it so that's what I'm on is our profile yeah and when you edit profile there's a section bio got it okay got it okay yeah I just <laughs> you know it's not good Thank you. Shouldn't it You're be welcome. A, where so where is it 
in the it's, in your it's on the it, it's on the bottom left there website. Oh, I have my video. Uh, okay, I'm glad I'm not the only one. <laughs> well, I mean, I I did it on mine, but I put it in where our website is, so I don't know where your where's your Bitly link in the in yeah, the yeah, bottom. That's I did, and so if you sorry, let me go back. It says editing is only available on the mobile app. Ah, and that's why it's so it's so it's not showing your you can't so it's not even showing what link is in your website. Correct. Okay, but it's there. It's in the website. You put it in the website part. So to do that, I need to be on my phone when I'm doing in the doing some of this. Yes, unfortunately, with Instagram, they are mainly a mobile right platform, and well, so there's only limited things you can do on the computer. And I wish they would change that. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that's really frustrating. why I haven't been able to figure that out. <laughs> I also, I use Linktree, which instead of Bitly, I didn't know you could use Bitly, but um, yeah, there's various other things. So that's how I've done it is by going to Linktree and then you just have one link that takes you to a bunch of other links. Yeah. Okay. So there's various apps out there that you can use in order to, to do the same thing with Bitly. And I didn't do a whole lot of research. Bitly was just the one recommended to me in a training I know that I get like a ridiculous amount of links a month for free on here that I don't even get close to using them all so I'm not sure with Linktree if there's a limit to how many links you can do but either one they work the same way um yeah, I don't know either, but we are pretty static with our links. Like we don't do a lot of dynamic linking to things. So yeah. I feel the need to, try. it's probably just my own insecurity, but I'm like, I'm noticing like, oh, there are some things we need to update on this Bitly page. <laughs> but I think this is just like a sign of where we're all at. We're like, oh yeah, Amazon Smile doesn't exist anymore. Whoops. We have, you know, like, it's just that we've been talking so much. I I think you all probably know that um, Ethan, our executive director, is is leaving, and so we're you know we're already kind of like okay, what can we pick up and what can we not pick up? And some things, including social media, have have just taken a little little lower lower spot in our priorities. So, <laughs> Kara, yeah. how do you do all this in ten hours a week? Um, <laughs> prioritizing. Definitely. So I don't have easy access to it right now, but I'll see if I can pull it up while I talk. We have created an Excel sheet that is our social media planning document. And so I have enlisted both Terry and Ethan and our board anytime they have an idea they can either email it to me or put it straight in this document. And that allows me to take a chunk of time, let's say an hour, and only do social media. And so I can go ahead and hop in Canva and create several different graphics, send them off for approval, type out the words, send that off for approval, and then have that scheduled out through meta business. And then I don't have to worry about social media for a week or so, unless I get responses, comments, things like that. And that's the big chunk. And then I take five minutes when I start my work day and I will hop on my phone and look at Instagram and see who liked our photos or commented and respond to comments. And I will go and look at all the other organizations that we follow and try to comment on their posts as well or share their posts because not only is that supporting them, but it's supporting us as well. Because like I said earlier in my presentation, you need to work the algorithm and the algorithm responds to activity. And so just saying, hey, great job, guys, on someone else's comment 
bumps us up and allows us to be seen by other people more. That's good to know. Yeah, I'm sorry I missed the first part of your talk. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good to know. And I've noticed that, you know, that when, the more activity I do on Instagram, it seems to get more followers and without me mm -hmm. doing a whole heck of a lot. Yeah. And I think I'll and just they go, do. Go ahead, Terry. Can you explain a little bit about? the time like is the time kind of uh is it unique to your people who follow your facebook page or is there just a time in general that's best because i remember hearing like 3 p.m for the last job i was in but i don't know if that's still the case and it's a very it's an, where i'm for profit versus non-profit i don't know i haven't looked into it i have not dialed that in yet for us right now facebook suggests that we post at 6 p.m and says that's our suggested time where we're going to get the most activity i have not gotten around to it i post at a variety of times anywhere from like noon 6 p.m sometimes it's four the most I try to focus on is when I think people, our audience is mainly people like you or state agencies, people who are going to be at work during the day. And they're most likely not going to be on their phone except for like at lunch or once they get off work. So when do I think someone's going to be actually on that app scrolling? And the thing I was going to chime in on earlier was that spreadsheet, which I don't think you need to show it, but, but yeah, we basically have, and I think it's a way of, you know, and I know Sarah and Deb, you're a little alone in your positions. I think you're the, oh no, Sarah, you said you have another employee, but you know, we all have boards. We all have members of our network. And so it's like MWCC has, you know, and, and Kira very often has to nudge me and Ethan be like, Hey, Hey, you said you would give me this content, right? But it's like, this is a team effort. You can't just be the communications person coming up with everything because you have your coworkers or your board members who are working I like, right? I handle the MWCC watershed fund, our small grants. And so that's a great thing to highlight. Like, hey, we gave out this much money this year or like check out these great projects that we funded and what they've done with the money. But like Kira doesn't have access to that information, right? So it's my responsibility if I want to get any social media, watershed news, if I want to get anything in anywhere, like I need to be communicating that to Kira. And I think, I think that spreadsheet has helped with that. We don't always, again, it's like, it's just one of those things that falls to the bottom. And that's why Kira has to poke us every once in a while. But like, we just, it's a team effort, right? Like you can't be just intuiting everything you should put on social media or in your newsletters or on your website or anywhere um, on your own. So hopefully you're able to get that information from your your coworkers too. I'm kind of doing it on my own. <laughs> yeah, Tim. Feel like Tim. What do we need to be publicizing? He well, he, yeah, um, yeah, but uh, it's basically me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, no, that's what I get paid for, right? But mm -hmm. but it, it's a time thing. Yeah. You know, I could spend. You know how it is. You guys. You know, we get on get on this social media and I start working with my website because I do that too. I'm the one who maintains our website and the information there. And, oh, uh, you know, we have 24 collaborative groups and, you know, so it, it just, you know, it, as you all know, it's a time sink. I guess I don't need to say more. <laughs> Well, and also like, I know a lot of those, I know a lot of those collaborative groups might not be great about social media themselves, but like, that's where, you know, Kira was speaking to like, we sometimes we're just sharing, especially right now. It's like, we're just, we're like sharing people, other people's stuff. It's like, oh, hey, you've got this great, great like, that's the beauty of being part of this network, you know, of yeah. conservation organizations or, or forest collaboratives. Exactly. And, and I, when I went on to uh, Montana Watershed Coordination, NWCCs. Uh, I, I got some nice ideas, by the way, from your Instagram. So I'm thank glad. You. Yeah. And yeah. Not just other organizations, too. I mean, one of our most popular posts was we follow, Terry and I follow this blog 
um Vule. Yes, Vule. And they had a Valentine's Day post about, you know, cheesy nonprofit um was it like great? thunder pickup lines or something like that? Yeah, like and how I just shared numbers. that. <laughs> and it was our most popular post we've had in probably six months. Oh yeah. wow. So did you share it on Instagram and Facebook or, or how did you share it? I think I just shared it only on Facebook. Okay. Yeah, I do and, it on. Yeah, and I was just like, hey, check this out. It's so funny. And, you know, obviously even said like, this is an hour. Thanks to Vule for sharing it. Yeah. And I think that's a good, that brings up something that we've talked about here, right? Is that like, yes, obviously we need our, our communications things to be like promoting MWCC's work and the work of our partners. Like that's obviously a goal for our audience. You know, when you think of fundraising and you think of all these things, like that's obviously a goal. But, but like you said, some, we had um, one of our board members wrote a blog post that was called nihilism and the argument for collaborative conservation right and we got i mean people were talking about that and it was like it was the wildest blog post but it was like yeah it was just something different you know i think that caught people's eye when oh this is interesting so it, it we found that like doing something like that you know every once in a while can help with your reach in general yeah and like i said in my presentation be authentic be you yeah. if that's a little cheesy that's okay if you're not a cheesy organization maybe it's not okay but but we are. <laughs> no yeah. I, I, it's good to hear that because sometimes you think am i doing this right yeah. or or how does this look you know everybody seems to have these great graphics and all this great stuff and and you know we don't have a you know we're working on a shoestring kind of in some ways and and uh, but we've got all these groups that rely on us in a lot of ways to provide them information. So, yeah, I'm glad you said that, Kira. It wasn't cheesy. <laughs> and I encourage you all. We just released the coordinators forum a little while ago to get on there. We have a whole section just around communications. If you have a question, if you have ideas to share, that's a great place to do it. Right. Terry and, and I get on every week look it over, try to continue the conversation. You know, that is, I did, I did share that with our, you know, I pick and choose what I share specifically through um, Google groups I use for our, for our um, participating groups. And I did share that with them. That, that looked like a really great resource. Thank you. So I'm wondering how you guys navigate those types of things in terms of privacy, how you word things, um, how do you get those more serious posts out and how do you decide what's an appropriate thing to share and what's not? Terry, I'd like for you to comment on that. Sure. Well, I, yeah, I also want to hear your perspective on something in particular, but um, yeah, it, this, this comes up all the time. It, um, because yeah, you don't want, the thing I'm curious here that you can be thinking about is like, do you feel that from, because I know we do like, I mean, there are certainly posts where you've just posted and I don't even know you're doing it. Um, and we're generally fine with that. But then there are times where like, oh, I need to look over this wording. You know, it feels like a balance to me. I don't know how it feels to you. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think the thing we've run into a lot that we might want to share is like our partners projects, especially that ones that we've contributed funding to through the Watershed Fund. That's a big one. But luckily we're able to get around that because we get everything from people's, right? So if, if we give you a small grant, you have to report on it at the end. And right at the top of that reporting form, it says by like sharing these photos, by sharing this, like you are giving us permission to use these things to promote our organization, your projects, the watershed fund generally, like you're basically like, and I say, if there's something you do not want to share in this report, let me know. I'm very clear on that right at the beginning. So that helps us with that kind of stuff. It's kind of like a blanket. Okay, we're going to share this. And in general, I mean, I, I can't envision a situation where a watershed group or conservation district that we've helped to fund would not want us to publicize their work, right? It's a little different. And the thing that I think of is like we were talking about sharing all of our board members' bios. Like, oh, we could do a series where we're like, hey, meet, meet our board members. And right, we've got 11 board members. So that's 11 posts, right? Um, but then it turned out that one of the board members was like, 
like is is a little like um I don't know how to describe them, but they, they don't want their stuff all over the world. They're not on social media. They don't want to be out there. And so it kind of was like, oh, okay, well, I guess we're not doing that. So it's a balance and it's tricky. And yeah, and, and being in for-profit, it's here and I talk about this all the time. It's one of the beauties of working for a small, small nonprofit is you kind of do get a lot more flexibility. And but yeah, Kira, how do you feel like it goes on our end with what you can and can't, what you can just post and what you have to run by me or Ethan? Um, I feel like there's a good balance. You know, I definitely don't want to say the wrong thing. I don't want to have to deal with social media black backlash. So I'm totally fine on, especially the serious stuff, to reach out to Tara and Ethan and be like, hey, is this okay? Mm -hmm. And let you take the fall. Yeah, I was just gonna say, and then you're like, not my, not my fault anymore. Um, but that was the other thing I was gonna say, Chris. And I don't know if this is appropriate. Right? It sounds like it might just not be appropriate in your situation, but. I'm trying to think of if there's a way that you could like push that envelope just a little bit and, or just be like, Hey, let me try this with something that's like a little outside, but not because you know, you, you might find that you get all these comments and like people might, and then you could go back and be like, look, you know, like maybe you could get them to let you do a trial balloon of something. That's what I was going to ask Chris. Um, there's, uh, an option at least on Facebook, maybe Instagram, where it's called like an A-B test. And I think you could put this forward to them in a way, if if they're looking to get more social media outreach, I guess that's the kicker. Is that actually what they want is more social media outreach and engagement? Because if they don't, then they'll probably say no. But if they do say, okay, we're going to do an A-B test. It's basically the same post, but like ones with their wording and ones with your kind of like cheesy, quirky wording and see which one does better. Yeah, I think that's maybe part of the issue is they they really just want to be there to be part of, to participate in kind of, like I said, the ecosystem of watershed restoration and conservation organizations but they're not really right at this point looking for clients and they probably won't be for like another 10 years. So they're not trying to build up their like portfolio at this point. They just want to be part of things and tell the story. So it's a little bit different. Um, but then again, you know, we're in charge, we're doing, sometimes we do events like volunteer events or stuff where it becomes important to do that outreach oh, yeah. and have that network. And it's very punctuated, but when you need it, you need it. And we don't have the reach and the engagement in order to make those things impactful because of the other things. So it's, yeah, it's, you can't kind of push or I've tried that. I just, I just finally did an advertisement. I don't know if it did any good, but I did an advertisement for um, a pub talk that we were doing. I don't know if it helped because it doesn't, yeah, it seems like you have to either, you have to function at a certain level all the time in order for it to be like what you need it to be sometimes. Yeah. I have a solution for you, Chris. Just share all of MWCC's posts, boost us. Uh, yes. <laughs> I'd be I like, I like right share as much as <laughs> I'll just ride on your guys' coattails and be okay <laughs> it's a good deal um, but speaking of I just um I don't want to like we're getting toward the end here and I haven't DeRay or Sarah or Claudia did you have anything Claudia I know you had or somebody had that question about time management that I think we sort of touched on but did you all have yes yeah I was just wondering about time management but I think what you described with um just like using your team and um that it doesn't all have to be me that I can collaborate and also just like setting times like you said like first thing in the morning like you you go on your social media and that's like how you kind of manage that um so that was definitely helpful Dre? yes i'm just not a social media person at all really and you know this is just a small part of my position and i think whitefish lake institute hasn't promoted it that much but i want to try and expand that a little bit or keep up with with these things. Um, and so it's all kind of new to me. 
uh, like just even getting on the, I mean, I've never done Instagram. So I'm like, okay, I guess I should get on their page and see what the last post was. <laughs> um, so I was just kind of getting some tips from you on making me feel a little more comfortable, I guess, doing that. <laughs> hey, I, and I guess yeah. you just have to do it. <laughs> it's good to hear someone say that because I had boycotted Facebook for years and didn't personally. And then when I needed to do this for MFCN <clears throat> and all the board, when I was telling them what I was doing and how I was doing it and what it took, they were just, cause none of them, you know, they're older and none of them, literally none of them, including Tim, mm -hmm. uh, just wanted nothing to do with it personally, didn't know about it. And what was surprising to me is how much this, here's a question. You know how, when you open a Facebook account, you, before you can do a, any sort of business account, you have to open one personally first, mm -hmm. which really yeah. teaches the whole time I'm going, you know, blankety blank you Zuckerberg, you know, and it just, <laughs> You know, and luckily when we did this, I did this back in 2016. And that was back before they had all the security stuff. I So according to Facebook, me personally, I'm a 20-something tw male. I know. And the whole time I'm like, take that, Zuckerberg. But now people have to show, I guess... They're, I know. To, I have to take the show their uh, IDs. Yeah. Some sort of ID. And so I was asking these agency leads. These are like the big guys. Who does it for their agencies? Who's putting themselves personally on the line mm -hmm. to create their Facebook and whatever other social media accounts? They had no idea. Well, yeah, but what about the agencies? Do you guys know? Do you know Terry? Do you know Karen? No. Mm -mm. Nobody. No. It's like big mystery. <laughs> like, but I love, I love that you said that. And you know, Chris topped in in the chat, and it's like, it's funny. Maybe Claudia, you're in a different boat because you're a little younger than the rest of us. But, um, but yeah, it, it is so interesting to me when we get like how many of us are like. I don't do social media or I wouldn't be doing social media if it wasn't for my job. Right. Um, and it makes me think of like the other ways that we reach our audience. Like you said, Deb, I am aware your audience, they are not social media users. Right. And so thinking about it, it kind of goes back. I mean, I know social media is important. Like we've apparently social media is important, but you know, it goes back to what Kira said about your audience. And I actually, Chris, it makes me think of you too. Like maybe you could ask, the people that you're working with, who is your audience? Like, who are you wanting to reach? And maybe what they're doing is reaching exactly the people they want to reach. And maybe it's not. And maybe that's where the conversation starts. Like, well, you're not actually reaching those people, right? But but it just makes me also think of the other ways that like the newsletter, like the Whitefish Lake Institute. I, I get Duray, I get your newsletter and I always check through it because I used to live in Whitefish, not just for MWCC, but like me, I'm more, right? I'm more of a like, oh, I get your email newsletter. And that's, and just to keep in mind that different people interact different ways. And that's why I wouldn't say we're trying to, you know, we'll sometimes have similar content in the watershed news and on the website and on the, you know, because people, you know, we can't do flyers, we're a statewide organization, but at least to be thinking about different ways. That yeah, like use. for example, that the newsletter, like, do I link that onto my, like the Facebook page? And I don't do that or it hasn't been yeah. done. But yeah, yeah. Kira does that and that's like, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> It's a whole yeah, in the past. Is that important or, you know, let, yeah. That's totally something we can continue to talk about on. I encourage you all, if you need to reach out to me, my email address is on our website. It's my first name at mtwatersheds.org. Also, like I said, the coordinators forum, go on there. I'd love to talk to you all about this. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. it. Appreciate it. Um, makes me feel like I'm not the only one who doesn't want, I, you know, you're forced to do it because of your job. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, I, yeah. I really like the idea of like, okay, so yeah, what is, where do you want to put your limited amount of energy and, and do you feel forced into social media and is it most appropriate? Like, would it be better to not do social media hardly at all and create a newsletter for 
partners and collaborators. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. What? Uh, yeah. Well, Anna, are you, you, you to say this? I want to say this. You're basically forced into it. I think these days you really are. Don't you think, Karen? I mean, I think it's up to your partner. I mean, I think MWCC, our network is wide enough. Like we just, it's kind of ridiculous. Like our, our network is just huge. Nonprofit, for-profit, state government, tribal government, federal agent. Like we just re, so for us, I think, yeah, I think we don't have a choice, but I think it depends, really, like I said, it depends on your audience. It depends on who you're trying to reach. And what you yeah. want out of it. Right. I mean, if you want yeah. volunteers that aren't in your normal database, uh -huh. yes, I think you should be doing social media and I think you should be doing more entertaining posts. Okay. Yeah, I just like, I think about that. And I'm like, okay, so we have a newsletter, Lakefront newsletter. And then, you know, I also run a volunteer monitoring program on a bunch of lakes and I deal with, so I kind of write a newsletter, a little bit of like a newsletter with them through um, constant contact. You know, uh, I just, I'm not sure, you know, and then, you know, we'll reach out for looking for more lake monitoring volunteers, citizen scientists or whatnot in the area. And I mean, obviously Facebook and would be probably somewhere great to post that or Instagram or like, Hey, do you love water? Do you like, bar you know, recreation? Like come join us and you have some time to, but then again, most of our volunteers are, <laughs> are older, retired <laughs> people that I don't know if you know a lot of our younger crowd you know they just don't have the time they don't live on lakes <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Good point. Good point. so kind of reaching a different audience and we have our volunteers that we reach but um I'm just kind of dabbling in expanding that yeah it reminds me of the saying um you can't be doing the same thing and expecting different results so if you're trying to reach a new audience, you can't be doing the same thing and expecting a new result, i.e. a new audience. You're going to have to try something different. Exactly. And that's what we tell, you know, because our, our groups, a lot of them are volunteer, you know, most of them are, and um, they're older. And one of their concerns is that they are not getting the younger people involved like they want to. And in order to do that, you've got to be on social media. Period. Yep. Well, I think those are some good parting thoughts from both of you. Um, I just want to, I already dropped that in the chat, that watershed coordinators forum. You do have to sign up for it because we just want to make sure you're actually representing some kind of conservation organization in Montana, but it's really quick. We give you a code and then you can get on there. So yeah, put your questions. There's a whole, I think it's just called communications and outreach, but there's like a topic that is specifically around communications. You can add a new question, respond to existing questions. It's pretty easy, um, even for those of us who are not great with technology. And I'll also drop just in the chat, um, this is on a whole different, definitely could be interesting to uh, Deb, but maybe others. Our next conservation conversation, we're going, we have these monthly, basically November through May, we kind of take the summer and early fall off for various reasons, but our next conservation conversation is gonna be in May. We're not gonna do one in April because we're having our annual meeting. It's April 26th in Helena. Um, hopefully you all see that registration is gonna come out in next week's Watershed News. So we'd love to see some of you in Helena for the annual meeting and the Watershed Stewardship Award ceremony on April 26th. But the next conservation conversation will be in May and it is May 10th. And that's gonna be with Matt Arno from DNRC and Seth Wilson from the Blackfoot Challenge. They're gonna be talking about all the collaborative collaborative forestry funding that's coming down the pipeline um, and how to form those partnerships. And we're really, you know, Deb, I know it's a lot of your partners who have been applying for those funds, but we're really trying to get like a lot of watershed groups are working on forestry things too, or maybe interested in working on forestry things to improve water quality and, and landscape health and all those things too. So um, that'll be a great conversation. I'm gonna drop this link in, um, just the link to our conservation conversations page which has all the information on that. And also, we, as you see, we did record. I'll cut out all the introductions at the beginning and post this to YouTube. 
I'll get an email out to everybody in the next week or so. Um, it sometimes takes me a little bit, but I will eventually get you Kira's slides as well as the recording and also to all the other people who registered and couldn't actually join us. So thank you. Right. Thank you so much, Kira, for sharing with us. Um, and yeah, just really appreciate your perspective of being limited time. Thank you, thank you I for being here. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.